So before we dive into this video, I want you to think in your head, whether you played the weapon or not, what makes a hunting horn a hunting horn? Now, this isn't a gotcha moment or me trying to pigeonhole you into a specific response. It might be more of a surface level thing for you. Maybe your checklist requires that it plays notes and plays music, or maybe it just solely has to be able to support and buff the entire hunting party. You can very easily dive deeper into the topic, and from the length of the video, I think you can tell that's exactly what we'll be doing. Imagine Greatsword automatically being on the third level of its charge combo every time. Imagine Sword and Shield being able to rip off Perfect Rush, no matter where you are, or if you're just standing. Dual Blades constantly in demon mode. Lance with a maxed out enraged guard buff 24-7. Gunlance automatically shelling when you poke with it. Hammer without charge levels. Switch Axe having 100% uptime with sword mode. Well, charge blade with maxed out loaded files 100% of the time. A bow that automatically fires power shots alongside its regular shots. Bow guns that all have eternal pierce and sticky ammo. Insect glaive with the benefit of red, white, and orange extracts without actually having to get the extracts. Imagine longsword with, um, uh, even more stuff. Now mind you, this is all subjective and my bias is definitely going to come out, but this conversation is obviously something that cannot be finite, so of course I welcome any and all discussions in the comments below, and if you read the title of the video and you already made up your mind, you can hit it with a dislike. Oh wait. Prior to Rise, if you were someone who frequently played the hunting horn, you probably have a horn that you love playing due to the music it would scream out during a recital or encore. I love the wild theme of the Rajang horn that fits the monster so perfectly, but I also love the elegant, delicate melody that plays when you use the gorgeous sonorous ice film. Seriously though, after I wrote that line of script, I had to go back and watch the videos I made for both of these horns. Yes, I made videos for specific horns back in the Worldborn days. As the videos began to evolve, there was a specific section in them where I would listen to the soundtrack of each horn. Now, if you ever played Hunting Horn in Worldborn, you might not get what I mean about the soundtrack. Back in my day, we had what was known as your queue, where you'd be able to stack songs and then depending on which one you wanted to play first, you could toss in a button combination to switch up what sounds would actually play. For example, these are the three sounds that would play when you play recitals on the Rajong Horn. And these are the three songs that would play when you use the gorgeous sonorous ice fill, aka the Velcona horn. It's just blatantly obvious that the priority of making each horn feel unique, outside of stats, fell way down the list as they transitioned from Iceborne to Rise. This was a major reason I played Hunting Horn, and mained it in the first place. Even if you play the same song, Attack Up L, it's going to sound way different doing it with one horn from the next. When you play a song in Rise, if you choose to use the version where you play songs, you get a quick, quiet snippet of a noise that can cross playing music off the list to call a weapon a hunting horn. If you're feeling adventurous, you can rip off a magnificent trio and get about a single track's worth. Being able to hurry up and get a song over with is one of the many things that had to be done to turn Hunting Horn into the great DPS master that it is in Rise today. Here's where we get into one of my biggest problems when it comes to Rise Horn actually being a Hunting Horn. No matter what Monster Hunter you go back to, the Hunting Horn at its core has always had a pretty simple playstyle. You load up notes in a specific order and then play that sequence of notes to gain a buff for yourself and your fellow hunters. I don't think it would be far-reaching to say that this is a component of Hunting Horn that's a defining characteristic of the weapon. There have been adjustments to it, but at its core it has always remained the same. Load up notes, play the song, gain the buff. Gen Yu saw the horn get a really neat addition to it in the form of double notes. When you are accurate with your strikes instead of a single note, you would load up a double note of that color. If you lined up every note of a song with double notes, you would not only play that song, but also the song you played before it. You could even start hunts by playing a double note recital of your self-improvement song to gain both the speed bump and mind's eye all at once. 
This brought on a fun new angle to the weapon, pushed you to be more precise with your strikes, rewarded you for doing so, but kept that core fundamental of the weapon. Load up notes, play songs, get buffs. Worldborn saw the introduction of the queue system. With this, you could line up multiple songs and play through your queue one song, one buff at a time. You can also pull off an encore which will replay any songs that have been played through the first recital. You could also start playing a specific song regardless of where it was on your queue list, just in case you want to prioritize that all ailments negated song. Now, just off the brief and simplified description of the queue system, it shows what makes the hunting horn what it is. It shows how it breeds good synergy and strategy with how you can use your recitals and encores. There's depth, there's personality. When we shift to the Rise Hunting Horn, you don't even have to do a recital. One of the recitals you use has the main priority of being iframes, so you can just stay in the face of the monster and do more max deeps. And no, don't come at me talking about that weak ass echo mode stuff. The time it takes to pull off this recital, coming from Worldborn where it takes, They cut down the time so they could push damage, 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 as they move more towards what a wise friend Jacob calls DPS boss fights. Encores have literally been removed altogether. There's one level for buffs. You play your 0.5 second recital so you can hurry up and get back to doing numbers. Honestly, this section of the video is what irks me the most and what really drove my disdain for Rise Hunting Horn because they took the unique, defining characteristic of the weapon and absolutely gutted it. Now, this is just a quick section explaining that I'm not by any means chastising you if you enjoy or have fun playing Rise Horn. They've thrown in a smoothly transitioning moveset and the framework for people that love to stay aggressive and have 100% uptime on doing damage to the monster. The thing for me is that having fun with the weapon isn't the end all be all. The feel of the weapon and what makes it unique means a lot to me, clearly. Anyways, that was just a quick section to deter any of the but it's more fun comments, but I feel like those will still come, but whatever, it's engagement. When you use a great sword and you land that final true charge slash, it's not just the huge number that pops up that gives you a sense of satisfaction or that dopamine rush, it's the weight of the great sword crashing down onto the monsters. Jump into Generations Ultimate and pick up the Hunting Horn. Every single swing that you make feels like you're swinging this massive weapon with a giant mass at the end of it. The Super Pound, the back swing, even the left and right swings have that fantastic and gratifying feel when you make contact. Now, when we talk about the Hunting Horn in Rise, it just feels like what many people in my community call blunt dual blades. No disrespect to those beautiful dual blade mains out there, but dual blades cut through monsters. It's not going to have a huge amount of impact. The move set for Hunting Horn and Rise is a double-edged sword. Don't get me wrong, they did a great job of making the moves flow seamlessly from one to another, but it just doesn't fit right with the Hunting Horn. This is supposed to be an unga bunga musical brother of the hammer. Every time I played Hunting Horn and Rise, I felt like I was one of those fire dancers jumping and spinning, but for some reason I was doing it with a heavy impact weapon like it was a paperweight. I honestly I honestly would not have thought Hunting Horn to be an impact weapon or a weapon that does blunt damage if there wasn't that specific noise letting you know that you're doing KO damage, because it doesn't have the impact or the feeling of it. Like I said, the moveset is well done, but it just doesn't fit the weapon. Maybe it's because it was such a drastic change in the opposite direction. Those weighty, impactful swings in Worldborn required you to play more precisely, to be one step ahead of the monster like your Jotaro Kujo. You knew the monster was going to land right here after I dodged this attack, so I'll have ample time for a super pound. Or maybe there's just a small window, so you go for the backswing. Regardless of which you chose, it felt rewarding for playing in such a tactical manner. Your attacks took time to land, they were weighty, they had impact. Unfortunately, the motion values didn't reflect this, so many people wrote off the weapon as a whole. They took a weapon that they very easily could have just increased motion values and instead turned it into Eddie Gordo from Tekken. They could have made a smooth, seamless moveset for a heavy weapon like the Hunting Horn used to be. I mean, just take a look at King. Impactful moves with seamless transition? In summary, let me suplex monsters as a Hunting Horn user. Capcom really wanted Hunting Horn to be more popular. This came from a place of good intentions. I want to make it clear that I very well know that. I just hate that they feel like they had to do a total rework for this to happen. The worst part of this was that the end surely didn't justify the means. 
Hunting Horn drew a lot of interest through the trailer and people seeing some of the fancy moves. The problem is that Hunting Horn was never a weapon that people were on the fence about. It was either a person was drawn to it and wanted to play it because of its depth, its song system, and its role as a supportive weapon. That's why they took such a drastic turn in hopes to convert those people who never even had a desire to use the weapon while alienating the core of people that loved the weapon and used it frequently. Don't get me wrong, Hunting Horn definitely went up at the start, but even as far back as June, it was already losing steam from that honeymoon phase. The people they were appealing to dropped the weapon and went back to Longsword or Light Bow Gun. At this point, it's pretty much the die-hard Horn enthusiasts that are going to ride or die with the weapon, and then the people that pick it up for a few hunts every once in a blue moon. I'd be very curious to see where it sits at right now as far as popularity goes. I'd be shocked if it was higher and not even lower than before. It can't come as a shock though. You can't rip the heart and soul out of a weapon, aka the song system and recitals, and expect the people who used it before to stick around. And the people they were appealing to already play weapons that do the whole damage thing and do it better. This ended up with us getting something along the lines of a hunting horn light weapon. A sprinkled in song mechanic to try and appease vets, and breakneck speed, flash, and damage to try and bring anybody else. I said it earlier in the video, but this was the biggest detracting factor for Horn Vets. Destroying the mechanic the entire weapon was built on by giving us weak ass recitals and an absolute removal and usefulness of encores. The complexity of the weapon and tactical play was lost in translation. You literally have to try to not play songs now. We went from three and four note combinations of differing order to either loading the same note twice or playing a single note. Having multiple levels of a song to get the full benefit to one and done. I haven't even talked about about shockwaves or having a main staple move being locked behind a gauge and that very same move giving you a bland across the board buff for every single horn that you use. I know all of this might sound like some boomer talk and might just sound like me saying get off my lawn but I'm okay with that. Get the fuck off my lawn and leave my hunting horn alone. But that's pretty much going to be it for this video. If you like Rise Hunting Horn, I'm happy for you. But it just isn't the same weapon it used to be. Not even close. If you want to tell me why I'm wrong or just continue the discussion, feel free to join the Discord at the link below. Catch me streaming Monster Hunter over on Twitch. Patreon link below if you want to support the channel as well. Dudes forever, happy hunting, and I will see you guys in the next video.